Good afternoon. I'm James Doyle, and it is my great pleasure to introduce to you uh, the next group, the next presentation. Uh, the four students, four students you see here, are uh, percussion majors and uh, music business majors here at Adams State, and they're going to present on a high impact practice that we have been taking part in in the music department on uh, percussion. And this high impact practice, this service learning opportunity uh, that we have is sponsored by the Title V uh, Center for Teaching, Innovation, and Research and by the South Fork Music Association. And they're going to tell you what we've been up to since November of last semester. So I'm going to turn it over. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming to our Student Scholar Days presentation on the Adams State University Percussion Academy. So what exactly is the Percussion Academy? Well, it's an after-school program that meets one night a week for 7th through 12th grade San Luis Valley students to come and learn many different facets of percussion. What's really interesting about our academy is that it's all prepared and all the lessons are designed by ASU education students uh, collaborating together with Dr. James Doyle to provide these lesson plans and decide what we're going to teach. And part of that is that we teach a lot of the conventional cl Western classical music style of percussion, but we also teach a lot of the world percussion tradition. This is a community-based learning project, meaning that the, as we teach the students, the intention is that we engage the community into this conversation and growing their skills as musicians and percussionists. And it's also a service learning project because the education students involved with this project further develop our skills as teachers and the music business students further develop themselves as entrepreneurs or what have you. The, we meet, have 18 meetings, 18 classes. The classes are one and a half hours each and every Monday at lunchtime Dr. James Doyle and all of the students involved with the project get together and plan for that week. So we have a mission statement for the Percussion Academy. I'm going to give you just a little bit of time to read it. Excellent. So some of the main points we wanted to drive home with our mission statement is that we want this to be inclusive of all students, regardless of race, gender, ethnicity, or where they're from, what school they go to. We want to make sure that all students feel that they're included in this conversation. And we also wanted to create an environment that facilitates learning above all else and gives the students a safe place to express themselves and to be creative through the world of music. So these are some of our core values. I'm going to cross the screen for a second. We have three aspects that are really important to us. Family, respect for one another, demonstrate courtesy and encouragement. Inclusiveness, we embrace all musicians and all musical styles. And commitment, we are committed to understanding the value of music and we are committed to making sure that all the students progress to be the best that they can be across the screen one more time. These are responsibilities for students and instructors. So these are expectations that we don't set for just the students in the program. We set these expectations for faculty and instructors as well. When the students in the academy first came, they, they along with their parent or guardian, signed a contract that stated all of these responsibilities. And essentially, we do this as a code of good citizenship. And this is a constant reminder to them of how they should behave and act and treat others. And some of those main points is, again, demonstrating respect, committing to the core values, strive to be the best you can, maintain a positive attitude, because you can't learn well if you don't have a positive attitude. And most of all, have fun. <laughs> Hi, my name is Emily Johnson, and I'm a junior music business major here at Adams State. And so my role in the Percussion Academy is more along the lines of the operations manager. So what I do entails the like logistics of everything we do when we lesson plan, anything from time management to location management. 
So a weekly um, academy meeting could look something like we have two private lessons, we have um, a clinic going on, and also a large ensemble rehearsal. So it's up to me to make sure that our instructors, as well as all of the ASU student or the percussion academy students know where they're going and how to get there and when they need to be there. Dr. James Doyle, who you met earlier, he's our faculty advisor. In addition to being our advisor, he was in charge of getting the grants um, to get this just started in general, as well as the marketing to get students there. He oversees our planning meetings as well as our debriefing meetings to see what we can do better and helps facilitate all of the um, material collection. My name is Andrew Naughton. I'm one of the instructors. I kind of help out with clinics, individualized lessons, and uh, you know the uh, you know preparing the lesson plans for each day. Howdy, my name is Dryden Hill. I'm a senior music education and percussion performance major. I'm another one of the instructors at our percussion academy. And in addition to working with the students, I also compose some exercises for them. I arrange music that they're going to play. I've given several clinics, and I do some one-on-one -on -one work with the individual students. My name is Kevin Johnson. I'm a percussion and music education major. I'm a senior, and my role is, as well as the previous two, I'm an instructor. And my role is to make sure that the lesson plan is being executed properly. And I've also given some clinics and done some private lessons with students. So as we've talked about, um, everything we do through the Percussion Academy is volunteer based. We have seven core instructors and two faculty slash staff instructors. And throughout the entirety of it so far, we've had over 15 volunteers as well as a guest artist for, as of last Tuesday, uh, 219 volunteer hours, which doesn't include a lot of our prep time yet. We're still calculating all of that. Our students come from six schools. There are 15 students. Um, in addition to the students, we have parents who come as well as band directors. And the experience and age um, is a wide variety. So the students are from seventh grade to 12th grade with really, a, we have a pretty young group this year, um, but we hope they stick with us and so we can keep getting older and more experienced um, ones. And right now it's a pretty even split. So we have some who have no musical experience at all whatsoever and some who have no percussion experience and the other half do percussion in their um, high school or middle school bands and one of them even gets uh, private lessons. So there's a very wide range which makes teaching a little more difficult, but they're going to get more into depth than that. Our students are characterized by just the super wide range in background, in grade level, even in musical experience, as Emily said. So when we were creating lesson plans, one of the biggest things we had to take into account was curriculum that's going to challenge some of our less skilled students at the same time as educating them while we can still push the boundary on some of our more skilled students. So we had to differentiate all of our different lesson plans to account for multiple skill levels. Um, we also worked in each of the Colorado Department of Education music standards. So we've got creation of music, music theory, expression of music, and then the aesthetic value of music and the aesthetic response that you get. So each of our lesson plans has three or four of those standards involved, and later we've got a slide detailing how exactly we explored each of those. In addition to giving the students good, solid technical information to help them improve as musicians, we wanted to bring in a little bit of music appreciation by exposing them to cultures of music from around the world. So we did loads of different, uh, loads of different types of activities from different cultures, which we can explain right now. So our Central American unit, our Central American marimba unit, we focused on teaching the kids how to read and also how to hold mallets properly, how to treat the instruments properly. We really use this as a demo for respect for not just us, but for the actual instruments themselves. In addition to that, we taught them a pretty interesting technique where most students are used to holding just one mallet at a time but we actually got them playing with two mallets in each hand for a total of four. We've got a quick video clip of that. One and two and three. One and two and three and four and two. All right, let's go ahead and stop real quick and rebuild up, build up our. 
In addition to that, our Samba, our Brazilian Samba unit, focused on that aesthetic response to music by combining movement, <laughs> dance, with the act of playing our Samba drums. Our West African hand drumming and marimba music kind of foreshadowed some of the elements we brought into improvisation, like call and response. Our orchestral percussion unit allowed us to really dig into just basic good techniques that are going to keep the students' muscles and whatnot healthy and at the same time allow them to be excellent musicians. Our uh, drumline unit was focused in on reading, teaching the students some basic music theory, teaching them how to read rhythms and how to just chart through a piece. Our drum set unit got to expose the students to some pretty efficient practice techniques and show them some good rehearsal strategies that they can do on their own or with the rest of their music program. Our, our improvisation unit actually involved all four of our music standards. We've got the creation of music, the aesthetic response to music, music theory, and the expression through music. So by having our students improvise, we were really teaching them to express themselves through that music. One of the last things that we taught our students about throughout the entire course of this project is health, particularly uh, your body health and your aural health, your ear health. So these instruments, uh, particularly marching percussion, are actually worn on a harness over your shoulders and like held up by your back. So we taught the students how they can stand with proper posture to avoid injury, some things to avoid so that you don't break your back later in life. We also explained uh, how hearing loss works and taught them some scenarios that they might want to use hearing protection. Whenever we play drum set, samba band, marching percussion, it's always paired with ear, uh, hearing protection. So in creating these lesson plans, we are students and we did face a few challenges. One of the first ones that we had to get over was students who cannot read music accompanied by students who can. So to do this, we taught by rote and note. We would give the students music and we would teach it to them by ear. Then we would give them the actual chart where they can see what they just played. This helped kind of reinforce that connection and has definitely helped some of our students get better at reading. As I mentioned before, we also had a great deal of differentiated instruction, so we broke the students down into three groups, kind of a high skill level, a growing skill level, and a basic skill level. And in these groups, we focused on making sure that the kids could play a part or an instrument that would challenge them, yet was still achievable for whatever their skill level was. In addition to that, we built vocabulary throughout the entire project, and every week we would take some of the ideas from the previous week or previous weeks and build on them. This spiral learning technique really just brings a cohesiveness to the whole curriculum. Um, a really big challenge for all of us is articulating our directions to the students, saying what we mean and meaning what we say. Uh, we had problems with rambling, we had problems with people over explaining, but we used a few strategies to kind of mitigate that. So we eliminated don't instructions. All of our instructions are given in the form of this is how you do this. You do the proper thing, instead of focusing on what we don't do. That helped. We also eliminated any kind of gendered language. We say y'all or folks. And in addition to that, all of us have really focused in on learning how to teach using uh, triple channel, so visual, uh, kinesthetic, and aural, thank you. <laughs> visual, kinesthetic, and aural techniques to kind of reach out to the students and engage them in different ways. All three of those really cleaned up the way that we present each of these lesson plans. Um, in addition to this, we had to kind of work on how we prompt student answers. In the beginning, we would tend to put students on the spot. I know in one of our first lessons, I asked a young middle school boy to take a solo on the steel pan, and the poor guy just froze up, couldn't even yeah. handle it. So we, we had to learn which students we can push forward into that next level and how to tell that by working with the students individually. And the last thing that we really worked on was time management. All of us needed to focus on time management with our lesson plannings, but we have a tendency to kind of go over and not watch the clock. Fortunately, our operations manager, Emily, she keeps us on it. And the very last thing is, uh, occasionally we have a tendency to ramble, which gets in the way of our articulating our point. And I'm doing that right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and pass it on to Mr. Cotton. Thank you. So not only is the Percussion Academy great for students to learn new aspects of percussion, it's also great for the Adams State students to learn new aspects of teaching. Um, on top of that, we have the clinics, we have the lesson planning, and we have the group teaching. Uh, and 
individualized instruction. That's kind of where main, mainly my focus has been in is individualized instruction and this is where we kind of do our evaluation and assessment is through individualized instruction. So we, at some point we took, I think we did it through the span of three days where we took students out individually and we had three instructors in a practice room and we'd have them do some basics. So we started with some basic eights. This was to kind of look over their technique, make sure they were doing everything correctly. Uh, and we also did some call and response such as, if you wouldn't mind, call and response. Uh, we would make it a little more advanced based on who came into the room. We had seventh graders come in, they would probably do something pretty similar to what we just did. Whereas if we had a more advanced student, like a 12th grader come in, we'd do 16 notes and some more, some more fast, more difficult things. Um, so as a part of the assessment, this is, this is when Doyle was assessing me on how I'm assessing the students, if that makes sense. So uh, <laughs> he's assessing how I was teaching, essentially. Uh, and in that assessment, we use those assessments to break up the students into the advanced group, as Dryden mentioned, the middle group, and the lower group. And we kind of separated those groups throughout the music building, and we created three different clinics. And we go over different types of percussion techniques, like sight reading, uh, I think we did some Janissary, which is just Turkish instruments like triangle and tambourine, and uh, some drumline. So whenever we had the lower band, we differentiate our instruction based on what they needed. So uh, the lower group, we teach them how to read their music, and then when the higher group came in, we do some more advanced rhythms. Uh, so some of the challenges of that individualized instruction would be that the different learning styles that you kind of have to accumulate for. So a student that comes in the seventh grade and never touched a percussion instrument in his life, you're going to have to approach it differently than you would somebody who's been playing it a while such as I would teach them, they would hold their sticks down to their side and then we'd have them bring it up and right there, just naturally with the fingers bent, that is their technique that we use. Um, and a student that's kind of played, he'd kind of get that already. So we wouldn't really need to brush on that unless there were some issues that we saw. Uh, as far as a formative assessment during this, can we go to the next one? As far as, a, oh, sorry, so this is the rubric. So these are kind of the things that we touched upon. Technique, technique is important in everything, including sports and art. So it's important to emphasize that they need to focus on that more than anything. Rhythm, uh, it kind of goes with technique. Rhythm is the basis of all music. Rhythm is the basis of all percussion. Uh, and reading, we want to make sure that our students can read the music that's put in front of them. And if they can't, that's okay. We also play by ear and by rote. Uh, so that's kind of what we did with that call and response. So, yes, so our summative assessment in music, we don't necessarily have essays or exams all the time. In high school, I remember we did just performances. And here, you're welcome to join. We're doing three different performances. Um, April 22nd, at, we're doing a matinee and a night performance in Richardson Auditorium at 7 p.m. And they will be kind of helping out with that one. Their actual performance will be the World Percussion Concert. And that'll be April 25th, if y'all want to see kind of how everything went. And that's 2018. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, sorry. Seven, no, it's okay. <laughs> 7 p.m. So also kind of a summative assessment. They'll be doing an online survey. Kind of in the survey, it'll tell them, they'll be asked questions like, what can we do better? Is there anything in the Percussion Academy that we didn't touch on that you may have want to touch on in the future? Uh, and then, of course, written reflections by us, what we think we did well, what we think we can do better how we thought it went smoothly, maybe maybe some other stuff that we can add in in the future. So, questions? Um, it occurs to me that this is a great, I mean, you guys did a wonderful job, and it's a great example of one of the biggest issues we have at Adams State in recruitment of new students. And this, in this way, you can connect with young students that can gain a passion, uh, build a relationship with them, bring them on campus, get them used to the university, and hopefully they'll come here someday. Mm -hmm. And so can you think of some ways that you might be able to kind of 
facilitate that recruitment process? Maybe? Yeah, actually this Percussion Academy is giving me some opportunities. Some band directors have come up to me personally and asked me to come out to their schools, like Buena Vista more specifically. Um, I went out all the way out to Buena Vista, it's like two hours away, and I taught the entire day, I taught percussion at their school. and. Everybody was interested, and it was kind of like, y'all should come to the school, and that's kind of uh, where I'm at with the recruitment cool. stage. Um, anything, y'all? I, I think personally, it's just, it's that subtle thing that's just under there of us being a little selfish trying to get more students. You know, um, we're trying to engage the community above all else and improve the musical talent within the community, but we also, yeah, subtly, we're trying to keep making better students and then when they see familiar faces and they already feel like they have a family here, it makes them want to come here more. Mm -hmm. Great. Good. And another way we expand on that is, as Andrew mentioned, our concerts. We're going to actually have some of our Percussion Academy students not just join in on their own concert, but help us play a few tunes on our concert where the ASU students are featured. So by bringing them in there, we've got them involved in not only this Percussion Academy, but now they're over in Richardson, they're seeing our performance facilities. They can, uh, occasionally we go up to the recording studio when we do those sectionals and we have to go to different places in the building. So we get to show them some of the facilities we have at the same time as allowing them to participate in performing with us. That's great, good job. Yeah, thank you. Uh, since you're sponsored by the grant opportunity, are you going to be able to continue the Academy into next year? Is it something that, is this a singular year of it, or will it? Yeah, please. So, yeah, the intention is that we're going to keep doing this every year. Uh, we want to keep students and add students, like we said in, in the last question. We want to build it so that we're building students from the high school age into the studio here. Now, whether that means we're going to have the grant for next year and all the years to come, I don't actually know the answer to that question. <laughs> um, I hope so. It's, so the students essentially are paying for this. It's $25 for like the entire 18 weeks. Uh, and the grant is kind of to help us facilitate. We got pads, we got drumsticks, uh, and... For the, for the students. For the students, yes. So each one got their own pair of drumsticks mm -hmm. and a practice pad to take home. And a lot of the students in the Valley, uh, some of them can't afford the what we have. And so we kind of, the grant helps us to let them in so that we can still pay for this and they don't have to pay. Mm -hmm. Additional to those, res we also give them resources, like we give them handout materials mm -hmm. that we get from textbooks that we purchase for the academy, mm -hmm. you know, textbooks that are um, designed specifically for teaching high school age students these, uh, techniques and these like, musical ideas. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you mentioned um, using gender neutral language. Can you talk a little bit about the gender breakup of the students? Yes, so um, we, it's, I think we have three females who show up out of the 15 students pretty regularly and everyone else is male. Um, and of the three female students, two of them are in middle school and one of them is in high school. She's actually our one senior. Um, so it's really important for us to make sure because they already are um, so, like the, the gap is much larger. Um, it's really important for us to make sure that we don't say you guys. It's always folks, y'all, those sort yeah, of things. So that way everyone feels included. Mm -hmm. So my follow-up question is how many female instructors do you have? Um, there, I'm the, I show up regularly, um, Delaney also shows up regularly, and Jess. So all of the percussion um, studio females show. Mm -hmm. It's essentially three and three. Yeah. About four sometimes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's pretty even. Anything else? All right. Well done. Thank yeah. you. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming.